The Renaissance reached its zenith in Spain in the 16th century, and it is evident that the Santiago Cathedral and its surroundings absorbed its influence. This is precisely when the new cloister, substituting the medieval one, was built. The works began in 1509, and in this project, some of the most famous masters of the Spanish Renaissance participated, such as Juan de Alaba and Rodrigo Gil de Ontañón. In its exterior, the palatial treasure facade and its famous step tower were built. Later on, this facade would be completed with the Torre de Vela, inspired by the former. Also in the 16th century, the Plaza del Obradoiro begins to take shape when the Hospital Real for Pilgrims and the Sick is constructed. The Catholic monarchs undergo a pilgrimage to Compostela to thank the Apostle Santiago for their conquest of Granada. Seeing firsthand the great number of worshippers, they promote its construction. Currently, it is known as the Hostal de los Reyes Católicos, and it is one of the most beautiful buildings of the Spanish Renaissance. Later, the building of the present steps that give way to the Portico de la Gloria, built by Ginés Martínez, would get underway. A gallery of Ionian columns would lend even more splendor to the Plaza del Obradoiro. A series of events had caused a reduction in the number of pilgrims to Santiago since the 14th century. The horrifying Black Plague that decimated the European population, as well as the Great Schism that divided Catholics in 1378, rang in this crisis. During the 16th century, Martin Luther's Reformation caused a whole new schism that fully affected Compostelan pilgrimages. After harshly criticizing this practice, he effectively uprooted Jacobean devotion in Central European nations. In 1589, Archbishop Juan de San Clemente was warned that the pirate Francis Drake had leveled a Coruña in response to the failed invasion of the Spanish Armada. The Archbishop proceeded to bury in complete secrecy the relics of the Apostle behind the main altar of the cathedral. The disappearance of the remains of the Apostle worsened the crisis of the Jacobean route. The arrival of the canon José de Vega y Verdugo at Santiago would be a determining factor in the Baroque metamorphosis of the old medieval cathedral. In 1656, the Cabildo approved a set of ambitious remodeling projects backed by the financing of King Felipe IV. The purpose of the canon was to superimpose new architectural and Baroque ornamental structures on the interior and exterior of the cathedral, while keeping the original Romanesque floor plan. These architectural reforms began in 1658 with the complete remodeling of the main chapel and the construction in the cathedral's apse and of the Portico Real de la Quintana with the purpose of dignifying the Puerta Santa, the pilgrims access during Jubilee years. The transformation of the apse of the basilica culminated first with the new dome atop the Gothic lantern tower, and later with the construction of the clock tower. The medieval crenellations became huge balustrades, and thus, little by little, Helmirez's Romanesque legacy 
became hidden under a modern Baroque cover. But the metamorphosis was not yet complete. The Baroque masking needed to be rounded off with a new facade in the Plaza del Obradoiro, and the architect Fernando de Casas was entrusted with the task. After many proposals, a new facade was finally built, replacing the one Master Mateo had constructed. The two medieval towers were raised and their heights were equaled. And in the central body, one of the largest windows ever built so far was open to illuminate the inside of the cathedral. Under a recess, the complex is presided by a sculpture of the Apostle Santiago wearing a pilgrim's habit. At his sides, two pairs of angels with the cross of the Order of Santiago. Under him, his disciples, Atanasio and Teodoro, also dressed as pilgrims, flanking an urn that represents the Apostle's sepulcher. And a star, the one the hermit Pelayo saw, where today stands the Temple of the Stars. Although the Way of St. James managed to recapture part of its prestige in the 18th century, a crisis relapsed with the great social changes of the 19th century. The low point came on July 25, 1867, when only 40 pilgrims attended the Apostles' festivity. But during the course of the 1879 dig, Canon López Ferreiro found the relics that had remained hidden for 300 years. In 1884, Pope Leo XIII declared their authenticity and extolled the populace to undertake pilgrimages to the Holy Sepulchre. The papal document was key to the revitalization of Jacobean faith. Since then, and until today, an increase in the number of pilgrims to Compostela has not waned. The visits of Pope John Paul II and later Benedict XVI in the Holy Compostelan year of 2010, surrounded by a fervent multitude of pilgrims from all over the world, are a testimony to the magnificent vitality the Jacobean cult has today. But notwithstanding all the changes, the works of Peláez and Gelmírez, of Masters Bernardo, Esteban, Mateo, and countless others, still remain unaltered and recognizable. In the spaces within its naves, columns, tribunes, chapels, and porticos, the spirit of all those who contributed to its erection is conserved.